All at once, the German came came out of the woods, and they took us. They had a truck. They loaded us on the truck, and uh, they was fixing care of the Germany. I started crying and screaming. I was scared to death. I thought I'd never see Mama and Daddy anymore. I was born in Poland, and I was six months old when my mother and daddy went to France. Then I went to school in France, but uh, life in France was pretty rough, you know, before the war. I had a good mother and daddy, though, and uh, we had a good life. In 1938, my brother, he was the, he was going to service. They took him in the army, and then when the war started, it was real. It was bad. For years, as Nazi Germany's power continued to rise, civilian families like that of young Anna Matisik lived on the brink of war. In 1939, Hitler's forces invaded Poland, igniting hostilities in Europe. In the following May, the long-feared German invasion of France was underway. When the war started, before the Germans came in, we had a lot of bombing. You know, they was bombing the city. And my mother was a nurse, and when the sirens would go off, my mother had to go to the place for emergency things. And my daddy would go with her because it'd be, sometime it'd be during the night. They would take us out of our bedroom and we had a cellar. They put my sister and me in the basement, then they would go to the emergency. And then they would let us sleep in the basement till morning. It was a hard life, you know. It wasn't funny. It was bad because my brother, he was a prisoner. They took him prisoner. So this is what was bad in our home because my mother was crying, you know, because we couldn't hear from my brother. The German attack was so swift and so fierce that many of the French forces were left disoriented and panicked. Their fighting spirit quickly diminished, and despite valiant support from the British armed forces, France fell under German control that June. The French military didn't give up, and they was laying, they was laying in ditches drunk. So the Germans just coming through our town, Easy. Things got bad, you know, with the Germans in there, you know. The few people that was left in a tent didn't have any bread to eat. Few of my neighbors, one day we decided we gonna go Glen. When the farmers take everything out of the field, they like wheat, there's always some left in the field and people would go pick the, you know, pick this up. We was in the field, we was fixing, get ready to glean. All at once, the German came, came out of the woods and they took us. They had a truck, they loaded us on the truck, and uh, they was fixing care of the Germany. I don't know why, I guess they thought maybe we was fine. I started crying and screaming, I was scared to death, I thought I'd never see Mama and Daddy anymore. They were sending a lot of people to concentration, that's why, you know, I was little, but I knew that it was a bad place. 
because I knew they probably kill us, you know. But my neighbor, her daughter, worked for the German commandant in Athens, and she told them German they could call they call him up and ask him if we were telling the truth, and they turned us loose. But I thought we was all gone. So I never went back cleaning anymore, <laughs> no. For more than four years, Anna and her family lived in fear, subject to German occupation. But in June of 1944, the tide of the war began to change. The planes start coming over, bumping. They kept going round and round. What they was after, there was an airport there. They was bumping the airplanes. The D-Day invasion brought the Allied forces to Western Europe in full strength. The Allies pursued their German foes across France, gradually liberating one town after another. Oh, this was good, you know. Everybody was happy, the American came. Some of them was marching, some of them was in cars, you know, in trucks, and everybody greeted them good. That's better than the Germans, you know. And uh, we thought, well, the war is over now. But the war was far from over. In December of 1944, the Allies' advance across Europe was brought to a halt when Adolf Hitler poured every available man and machine into a surprise counterattack. The Allied forces were caught off guard, and throngs of troops were surrounded. The Battle of the Bulge would be the largest and bloodiest battle yet for the United States Armed Forces. Miles back from the front lines, continuing life in her newly liberated town, Anna would soon have a fateful encounter with a young American soldier of the 6th Armored Division. I was at home, and I looked on the sidewalks. I saw him coming on the sidewalk, him and his friend. And I thought, oh, I'm going to run in the house. I run in the house, let him Passed by, didn't want them to see me. After they passed, I went back outside, was uh, washing clothes. And next thing I knew, somebody hit me on the shoulder, and it was him. You know, I said, oh my gosh. And then, you know, my daddy heard me talking to somebody, he opened the door, invited him and his friend in. And uh, that's how we met, you know. <laughs> no, I kept coming back. I don't know why he kept coming back, you know. <laughs> I couldn't speak English, and he could speak just a little better French, not much. So, you know, we just learned to uh, communicate, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of this. That's how we fell in love. <laughs> he was uh, at the uh, Battle of the Bulge. I know it was bad on him. When I met him, uh, he was shell shock. You know. But uh, I think I helped him, you know. I think he accepted my family for... His family was here, you know, and uh, he got acquainted, my daddy and my mother. He, 
we treated him like he was one of our own, you know. He needed somebody then, you know. Oh, we went off, we went to a movie, you know, in a town, and this is when he proposed to me. I told him, I said, gotta talk to mama and daddy now. As the Allies continued their drive toward Berlin and the German war machine's strength began to wane, prison camps were uncovered, prisoners released, and Anna received an early wedding present. A taxi drove up, and uh, my daddy went outside, and, you know, he looked in the back seat, my brother was in there. And uh, my mother, you know, and maybe we was upstairs, we ran downstairs when uh, daddy said, George. And so we ran downstairs to the taxi, and there was George. He finally came home just before our wedding. We got married in February, every. And this was a party. Everybody was celebrating, you know, it was a happy time then. Can you tell me about your wedding dress? Yeah. You wanna get the wedding dress? <laughs> it was made out of parachute. Yeah, it was during the war, you know, we didn't have, you know. So my friend made this out of a parachute. We found a parachute in the field because a lot of soldiers was coming then, you know. And we found a parachute and she made my wedding dress. I wish I could get in it now, but I can. <laughs> May of 1945, the war in Europe finally came to an end. Soon Anna would find herself on a ship to America where her husband was waiting for her. The two settled in Alabama, raised a family, and spent a lifetime together. Had a good life and I had a good husband. 76 years, we was married 76. And he passed away Lake year, three days before our anniversary. I wish y'all could come when he was still here. He was a talker, <laughs> he talked a lot. He was real good to me. everyone, I'm Josh from Memoirs of World War II, and I just want to say thank you for watching this episode. Our goal is to capture as many World War II veteran stories as we can from all over the world, but we can't do it alone. If you'd like to help us in this mission, consider supporting us through Patreon, and check out our website, memoirsofworldwar2.com, for more information. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. Again, we want to thank you for your support, and thanks for watching.